I lost my friend money, uh, I lost my money, um, I mean, I, I lost everything. Um, All right, let's do this. When I was only a junior commodity trader, I started a vegetable oil trading company in Senegal. And in this video, I'm going to open the kimono and let you know everything that happened to this company. How I stole the company ID, how I executed it on it, and how even if the company was profitable, I lost everything. Honestly, I'm still a bit emotionally scarred by this, uh, by what happened. So uh, this is the first time ever that I'm going to speak about uh, the full story to anyone. So um, maybe I'm still a bit ashamed about what happened. So at the time, I was a, still a young soft commodity traders, um, and my area of focus was west africa and my biggest market was senegal so i knew the country that well senegal is a wonderful country bordered by mauritania in the north mali to the east guinea to the southeast and guinea bissau to the southwest the capital and largest city is dakar the official language is french but wolof and other local languages are widely spoken it has a population of approximately 16 million people and a very diverse culture. And what I like the most uh, about Senegal and Dakar is that it was extremely safe for a West African country and the people were extremely welcoming and nice. And to give you a concrete example, uh, I think Dakar is maybe the only capital in West Africa where a white dude like me can walk uh, at night in most of the neighborhood without too much risk of getting mugged, which is nice. And back then, I spent actually one week every other month um, in Senegal, at least. Uh, I mean, I love the country. I even traveled with my wife there. And it's, that was really, it's a really, really nice country. A anyway, over the time, I've developed a lot of really good relationship and even friendship with um, a bunch of leads and uh, clients in the country. And one of them was uh, a Senegalese uh, Lebanese, let's call him Nasser. The more I got to know Nasser, the more I admired him. He started not with so much money, and in five years, he created a mid sized importer in Dakar. And his main business was buying 25 uh, kg bags of milk powder and repacking them in uh, small pouches. And I think in, after five years, he was doing maybe 10 or 15 million. Uh, euro in revenue for three years each time i went to, to dakar i went to say hi to nasser hoping one day to to sell uh, to him a cargo of milk powder and um, yeah that was my, my job back then over the time i kept asking him about uh, his business his numbers uh, and so on about the market and i noticed that something was a bit off because nasser kept telling me that he had a factory but each time i met him uh, i met him at his warehouse and he had a, like a little office next to his warehouse uh, where i could see all these stocks but um but never the repacking factory and one day i said look nasser do you have a factory i feel like you don't but he said like okay damien let me explain to you something and he, sh he showed me his warehouse he said look and you could see like maybe 20 or 50 jews like waiting in the in the warehouse and he said look at me this is my machine I'm like, what he said yeah those guys are repacking manually the 25 kg back then to purchase i'm like oh okay now i get it i mean <laughs> so basically he was using a, i mean employees uh, to to repack manually 25 kg bags in two small pouches which was for me completely unheard of <laughs> because of course of the issue with the sanitization and so on but you know he didn't fucking care I mean, they did it in this dirty warehouse <laughs> and i was like okay <laughs> so i still have shit to learn about how it works there but um but anyway um then we went out and we discussed uh during that night how he sees his business how he want to expand and so on and basically he told me that he was thinking about one idea which was repacking uh, cooking oil from flexi tank into really small bottle because he said to me like you know damian people in the market they don't have money so we need to give them like the smallest item possible so they can buy it and for me it's a good business 
Big, bigger margin for smaller items. Currently on the market, there is no one which is doing extremely small packaging of vegetable oil, but I'm sure there's a market for that. And I'm going to do the same as, as I did with a milk powder, buying in bulk, reselling in small packaging. I'm sure it's going to do a big good business. And after that night, I went back to my hotel and in the taxi, I remember very well. I'm going to do this business. I'm just going to store his ID and I'm going to do it. I already have a lot of connection with suppliers in Malaysia and in Indonesia. As at my day job, most of my clients were ice cream makers and we already supplied them with hydrogenated coconut oil that we brought from the same factory as palm oil factory. So that night, I arrived at the hotel and spent the rest of the night and morning writing in my notebook what is going to be required to pull this off. And the plan was actually quite simple. For the first step, I need to create a distribution network in Senegal. I need to understand and to learn the distribution game in this country. So starting by buying containers of 25 liters palm oil and distributing them. Pretty straightforward business. And this will be the proof of concept. So this is the first step to create a track record and show to future investors that we know what we do in Senegal. And then in a second step, they can trust us with more capital to set up a very small repacking factory where we could buy the palm oil in flexi tanks to fill small bottles. Then step number three, we increase our volume. We get better margin than the competition because we are able to resell in small packages and we start speculating. <laughs> to execute the plan, I needed to find someone able to run the operation in Senegal, meaning distributing and importing the, the palm oil. And I had the perfect guy for that. Uh, I mean, I, I thought at the time. Let's call him Terry. Terry was a Senegalese, the right arm of a small importer in Dakar. He could speak French and English, while his boss could only speak Wolof. So he handled everything in his company with the internet suppliers and the import operation. I saw him working seven days a week, non-stop, and we had a great relationship. So I proposed him to come and work with me to be the third partner in our business. And his job was basically running the operation in Senegal. I would be in charge of financing and purchasing. He would be in charge of distribution um, and import. And the third partner, a very good friend of mine, was going to, to give us the money to, 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 to start. Because um, I indeed put a little bit of mine, but I also needed his to, to get it going. Look at these pictures. Uh, it was taken right after we created the company in Senegal. I remember I had to max out my credit card to get enough cash to pay the notary. Uh, this little bird in my hand was supposed to be a lucky charm. You free the little bird to get luck on your side. Uh, it didn't uh, work. So we started the company, we made two down payments to get two containers rolling and let's go! And here is another uh, picture of Terry and me in front of our very first uh, cargo of uh, palm oil. I mean, I was stoked, seriously. <laughs> anyway, but with the small capital that we had, I mean, it was very, very slow to get it going and because it takes 45 days for a container to be shipped from Malaysia to Senegal. I decided to use um, uh, my, my, my lethal weapon. So <laughs> I decided to use my charm. So I flew to Malaysia uh, and I said to my wife that it was going to be a uh, vacation, but actually I spent a lot of time with, uh, with suppliers. <laughs> <laughs> she was not really happy about that, but uh, anyway, so, um, and there, what I did is I went to see the CEO, the commercial manager, I mean, the, someone extremely high in the rank, and I basically pitched uh, them into uh, my idea of, of repiking from flexi tank to small bottle. And I kind of let them um, think that there was a possibility for us to, to partner up so they can set up a distribution center in, uh, in Senegal. And that was, I was basically open to that idea, but of course that was a bit too, too soon. But we need to show proof that we can deliver what uh, we are planning. Uh, and to do that, I needed one little, little thing from them. I needed, I needed them to give me 60 days to pay for uh, the cargo, which is something that they usually, I mean, not usually, they don't. I mean, I, this, this was a very new company in Senegal. They had like no credit insurance on it. Usually suppliers, they don't uh, give credit. You need to pay upfront or at least you need to, to prepare. 
So uh, that was not an easy sell. But I think that um, a bunch of them accepted it because they could invest uh, in the future with me to have a strong foot uh, in, uh, in Africa. And also, I think most of them just want to sell up FlexiTank instead of uh, Jerrycan or small packaging. So I, I don't know why. I think that was the right time, the right pitch and so on. They, they, yeah, a lot of them accepted it to give me 60 days, uh, completely unsecured. Retrospectively, I think what I did was like a magic trick because I don't know how I pulled this off. I was so young and so naive, but it worked. At the moment that it was really starting to work, that we were really picking up in terms of speed, in terms of volumes, um, it's, we had a continuous flow of, uh, of containers. Of course, the, those 60 days, it was extremely tight for us to import and resell uh, in 60 days, but we managed to do it. So, uh, I mean, we started, we started to, to make profit. Um, the market was really a bit against us for a while, but even though we managed to make money, so no, I, I was really, really confident. And then uh, it happened. Terry just stole all the money and ran away to Belgium or France or what. I mean, at the time, I really didn't know what to do. Uh, I was still kind of young, I mean, a bit inexperienced. Uh, and yeah, and, uh, I, I had no idea what to do. Uh, as you can imagine, all the suppliers uh, called me, treating me with a lawsuit, with insult, even treating me physically. <laughs> uh, and they all believed that uh, I took the money actually from, from, from them and I was a scam artist. Uh, or, um, I, I lost my friend money, uh, I lost my money, um, I mean, I, I lost everything, I could, couldn't sleep for weeks, I mean, uh, that was very, very difficult time. Put me in financial distress for, for you. <laughs> I mean, no one knows that because I've never said it, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that shit was heavy. And the thing is, is that uh, I knew that I fucked up. I mean, I had no excuses. I wanted to be the captain of the ship. I wanted to create a company. I should have known better. I should have done better. I mean, if you want to run a big company, you need to, to be better than that. And I didn't have the skills or the character traits by then to, to handle this, uh, what happened. And uh, yeah, this blew up. Everything that happened to me, I deserved it. I wanted to, to be the captain, but I fucked up. So I'm recording this video six years after the, the theft. And I can now say that this uh, shit forged me, forged me into the man that I am today, forged me into the businessman that I am today. To be honest, if the same stuff happened to me right now, with my new skill set and my new character traits, I'm pretty sure I could handle that and without actually too, <laughs> too much loss. Back then, my maybe skill set and character traits was here. And now it's up there. So now I know how to handle that. I know how also to handle this type of pressure. I mean, the harder the world, the better the adventures, no? If you are still watching this video, uh, let me know what you think, because some one that I think is an extremely wise man told me once that uh, um, you should not speak openly about your fucked up. <laughs> But I'm not sure about that, to be honest. Do, do you think that I should remove this video because it's going to hurt me uh, in my future career? And also what I think is that if someone is going through a very tough time right now, um, just know that 